making plans for night you This boy is electric Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle for another energy related video. Time today to talk about solar panels, generation, energy usage, all of those great things and give you the detail, the data of how we're getting on here in Norfolk. But March has been so good this year, it really emphasises and exaggerates the issue that I'm trying to portray in these videos that I'm doing on a monthly basis, giving you the truth, giving you the data, giving you the reality about what it's like going solar, what it's like going electric. I can imagine a world where more people, more businesses are generating their own energy, they have battery storage, they have access to cheaper tariffs. We can all not struggle with energy. We can all enjoy the benefits that I'm enjoying of low bills, no bills, energy independence, so that I'm not concerned about energy price rises. Because they want you spending thousands. They want their billions in their pocket. Where I imagine a world where that's not happening and the oil and gas industry stops influencing the world so much and we don't struggle with energy. So that's why I do my videos. It sounds rather you know, overly grand, doesn't it? You know, just me in this little channel, I'm trying to exaggerate and see this big, better world. But honestly, it's why I do these videos, because why is it just me that's benefiting from this? It's not because I'm rich. It's not because I've got lots of money. It's just that I've seen a better future. I've seen a strategy of going electric and it works. And that's what I want to convey on this channel and through these videos. So, Let's uh, not whinge on about it and not uh, get too evangelistic and all those sort of things, but March has been so, so good. It really, really highlights how good solar panels are, going electric is. So if you haven't already, you really need to pay attention to some of the detail of this and see that it really is possible. You just need to start, start the journey. Next time you make a decision, buy something more efficient. Next time you're gonna buy a car, go electric. Get yourself that electric tariff as well, get your energy bills down, start chipping away at it and before you know it, a few years down the road, you'll be fully electric and you won't have energy bills and you'll be smiling like I do, thinking, why on earth didn't I do this sooner? Let's start by going back in time to 2024 last year for a reminder of how the year ended up with importing 7,002 kilowatt hours for a price we paid of £525.15. £15. So if we paid that, if we were billed that, why do I keep saying we get all this energy for free? And I, I have no bills. And it's because the figures at the bottom, 7,330 kilowatt hours exported for a credit of £1,099.50. So we didn't pay any bills. That £525 bill was more than covered by the credit of £1,099. Solar is paying for our entire energy use for cars and the home. How's it going to work out this year in 2025 though? It's a damn good start so far. It's unusual to start these videos talking about export, but there we are. For March, we exported 1,336 kilowatt hours. Yep, that's a huge amount of export, more than we've exported on any other month in any other year. 2020 to 2023 values on this chart are when I was self-consuming the solar, so I wasn't actually trying to export it as much. But last year, 2024, I was trying to export it. I was trying to gain that credit. But this March really shows how much more I've exported from the battery, how much more solar we've generated and been able to export. And you can really see how big this number is. The value of that export was £200.41 credit for the month of March. This month was so exceptional, in fact, that it's broken the My Energy app system. Well, it's revealed a weakness or a fault that's always been in the app, probably. Generation on here is showing us 1.51 megawatt hours, and that is not what we generated. We generated 1.3 megawatt hours. What's happened here is My Energy are adding together consumed generation of 204.5 kilowatt hours to the 1,307.6 exported generation. They're deriving generation, even though there's a CT clip and their servers actually show the value of generation which you can see here 
So it's disappointing seeing my energy report incorrect data just because they're deriving numbers on that front page when they have the actual numbers here. But it really does go to show that exporting energy from the battery isn't perhaps normal. When this app was developed, when my energy started out, people weren't doing that. They weren't exporting from batteries for payment because the export benefit wasn't as good as it is today. This daily energy chart from Octopus is a good example of how we're actually achieving those huge numbers. So this was a good, clear, sunny day in March. There's been quite a few of them, but we exported 70.05 kilowatt hours. You can see the curve there during the day where there's a lot of sun and when the peaks reached at 12 o'clock and we're exporting all that energy. Then the solar generation ends and then we start exporting from the battery. So this is previously imported energy from the grid, stored on a battery for 7 pence a kilowatt hour, then exported back out for 15 pence a kilowatt hour. Going forward in April, I'm not going to be exporting from the battery as much, so the amount we export won't be as high in April, I'm imagining, unless, of course, there's even more solar. But I won't be pushing the boundaries by exporting from the battery as much. I don't need to, so I'm not going to do that during April, just to see the difference. Enough about export. What about import? How much energy do we bring in from the grid? And that was 615 kilowatt hours. And as you can see on the very right hand side of this graph, that's nothing special. It's pretty normal. Another piece of software not quite working as it should do is the Octopus Energy monthly chart for March. The last day, the 31st, normally updates the day after. But uh, three, four days later, that last day is not showing up on the monthly chart, even though on the daily side, it's still visible. So I've had to manually put on here the amount of kilowatt hours that we have imported, 615. And that was for a total cost of £57.99, pence, including the standard charge. Total solar generation for the month of March was 1,314 kilowatt hours. Again, on the very right hand side of this chart, you can see that it's higher than any other month in, in any other year so far. So it's not just a record for March, it's a record completely for all of my generation since we started installing solar. This is the day-by-day -day breakdown of the solar production for the month of March. And as you can see, there are just loads of days where it is above 40 kilowatt hours. The whole month of March averaged above 40 kilowatt hours per day. And the peak was around 60 kilowatt hours. March has just been fantastic. In fact, I looked it up. It's been the best March sunny weather in Norfolk since 1927. It does make me wonder, though, if we're starting to repeat records from as far back as 1927, then it's around that time when Norwich, Norfolk had the biggest ever floods, where the whole of Norwich was flooded. So is this global warming? Are we going back and having some peaks that we haven't had for nearly 100 years? I hope not. This is the breakdown of the four different solar arrays that we have and how much we generated. Uh, the darker blue color, 554 kilowatt hours. That's the 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels with our 3.68 kilowatt inverter. And that alone shows the difference to the previous years from 2019 to 2024. 554 is way above. It's, it's a good 10, 15% more than the next highest year that we had in 2022. And if you looked at whatever the average was it would only be 300 and something so it's a, it's a huge amount more than the average the green chart line is the solar edge array 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels with a two kilowatt inverter again much higher the light blue line that's our gable and garage panels that's the highest we've seen and the darkest line there 250 kilowatt hours that's the new garden solar array so we've generated more this march than any other year because of that extra array this year that we have the extra six solar panels that i have in the garden the daily breakdown for that array, the six panels in the garden, 250 kilowatt hours. As you can see here, quite a few days above 10 kilowatt hours. The peak on the 18th of March, 11.6 kilowatt hours. It would be a lot more, but we have shade from a tree in the afternoon from about half past one onwards. The other 2.4 kilowatt array that we have, which is ideal for comparing to those garden solar panels, this is eight 300 watt panels connected to a solar edge inverter, generating 315 kilowatt hours versus the 250 kilowatt hours in the garden. Really shows the difference with that shade that we have from the trees. Expanding this same chart to show you April's generation on the solar edge array as well really highlights how good March has been. March's generation this month 
is more like April's. We're a month ahead. And yet in April, there'll be much more daylight. So there'll be much more potential to generate more energy. But March has been level with the best April we've ever had as well. The first solar array that we installed, the 3.9 kilowatts with the 3.68 Solis inverter, that generated 554 kilowatt hours. The peak day again was the 18th, where we generated 25.7 kilowatt hours. And our last array, that's the three panels on the garage roof and the four panels we have on our east facing gable generated 195 kilowatt hours. Another 9.6 kilowatt hours on the peak day, which was actually the 31st of March. What's been really good this month, though, is seeing all of the inverters max out. So this is the Solar Edge array maxing out at its 2 kilowatt limit. And then this array, the uh, Solus 3.68 kilowatt inverter, again, maxing out and starting to clip at 3.68 kilowatts. It's really good to see these inverters maxing out. We're maximizing our potential already in March. What comes next, of course, is longer days. So April, May and June are going to have longer solar days so we can generate more. But here's the data for the number of kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. March 2025, 142.05 for the 3.9 kilowatt array, 67.24 for the east facing gable and garage, which has the most shade. And hence, we only generated 67.24 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed, then 131 for the solar edge and 104 for the garden panels. Again, showing that difference with the shade that we have in the afternoon. This number, the number of kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed is a really good one for comparing on a monthly basis or between systems. You can look at your own system and see how you're doing compared to my panels that are south facing on a roof versus yours that might be east and west facing, for example. So how did we use that energy? This is the chart from My Energy that shows that we use 66.4 kilowatt hours diverting solar energy or charging from cheap rate energy overnight into our hot water tank, which is a mixergy hot water tank. 66.4 kilowatt hours, 153.6 went into our two electric cars via the My Energy Zappi, and the house consumed 642.2 kilowatt hours, and that includes charging the battery up overnight from the grid. Talking about hot water usage, um, I've tweaked our parameters so that we are using even less hot water. So basically, I've made it so that we have even less percentage of hot water in the tank at any one time. There is just enough for when we need it, but not very much. I really have been trying to minimize the amount of energy we're using. And I think I'm going to change that going forward in April. Now that we have so much credit and so much extra energy, I don't think I need to worry so much. It's not like we're compromising, but perhaps I could just use it more freely. So I'm going to try that in April and see what the difference is between March and April on trying to be really efficient in March and export as much as possible in March. But in April, I'm not going to export as much. and I'm going to use more energy. So we'll see what the difference really is. Hot water temperature hasn't really been impacted by that change. It's still above 50 degrees when it's heated and it drops down overnight to around 40 degrees. The spike in the middle was us cleansing the tank. So it's when we fill it to 100% full and keep it above 51 degrees to make sure there's no Legionella in the hot water tank. This is the breakdown by device that I have available to me from Home Assistant, showing me how much energy each individual device is using. And the ones to take away from this, I won't go through every single one, but it's the Toshiba Aircon Energy, our air-to-air -air heat pump heating system for the house. is still being used. It's still cold. It's still dropping down to one, two, three degrees overnight. So we still need heating on, and we're using just over 90 kilowatt hours for the main heating system. We're still also heating the cloakroom and ensuite with immersion radiators. Uh, it is still cold, so we still need the heating on first thing in the morning at least. But it's this time of year when you really appreciate having solar because it doesn't matter how cold it is. It doesn't matter how much heating you need. It's all free. There's so much energy available. You can use it to heat as much as you want. This chart shows the different temperatures throughout the month in each individual room in the house. The pink at the bottom showing our loft temperature. So it clearly indicates we were close to zero a couple of times in the first half of the month. But the second half of the month has been much warmer and hence we've needed less heating in the second half of the month. We've had more solar gain through the windows. The house has felt warm just from the sun shining through windows rather than having to have the heater on. 
This is the detail chart for our Toshiba air-to-air -air heating system, the heat pump. It's an 8 kilowatt inverter heat pump outside with three indoor units varying in size between 2.5 kilowatt output and 3.7 kilowatt output capability. 94 kilowatt hours consumed, 26% less than in February, 3 kilowatt hour average throughout the month of March, 7 kilowatt hour maximum and 1.15 kilowatt hour minimum for the month of March. Really isn't a lot of energy at all is it to heat your home using one of these systems. This chart is showing our battery state of charge, so how full the Pylon Tech batteries are. We've got 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And as you can see on the left hand side, we were filling it to 100% in February and early March. And then I changed it to only charge the batteries up to 80% overnight. We just don't need that extra 20%. I've still got plenty of energy to export 10, 12, 15 kilowatt hours overnight if we need to, if I want to increase the amount of export that we're actually sending out to the grid for a bigger credit. As I said earlier in the video, in April, I'm not going to do that as much. So year to day, energy wise, 2025, we have generated two megawatt hours already. March was significantly more, three times as much as January or February, and we are already in credit for the year. As I'm recording this video, every day this week looks exactly the same as well. Clear blue skies, lots of solar generation. When will it end? This last solar chart really does tell a story here. Um, it is showing the peak power generated by all of our solar together so the collective peak power output of our solar arrays in the beginning of the month it started at eight kilowatts the middle of the month we're not seeing 9.7 kilowatts and now it's slightly less but just about every single day we're peaking over eight kilowatts loads of solar at some point in the day every day of march Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to leave me some comments about how you're getting on with your solar installation. I love the discussion. I love the comparison wherever you are in the country or the world. It's all great to compare how we're getting on. But it does seem, doesn't it, that there's some odd things happening. You know, February was extra dull. It was extremely dull. We had very little solar. It was odd. March has been odd from the other point of view. March has been more like... June, July, August, it's been incredibly good, but it's been cold. It's just perfect in those scenarios. Lots of sunshine and heating on for free. Lots of sunshine makes you want to go out and drive in the car and you do it all for free. It, it's a wonderful world once you've gone electric and I hope more people understand that and can see that from the data, not just that I'm going on and on and on about how good it is. I really hope you can see the data, the facts that it does work. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.